What's up guys, HCZ here. Welcome back to Yu-Gi-Oh! Deck of the Day. Today we're taking a look at Time Thieves, a deck that got more support in Ghosts from the Past. And I think Time Thieves is one of those decks that people actually expected more support way, way sooner when it was being still being an OCG and TCG exclusive deck. But Konami decided to put more decks instead of giving us support for this deck. So now that we have more cards, I think it's time to take a look at the deck because I think the deck has a playstyle that is a very, very unique. The only thing that came close to it was being played like in Luna Lights being a such a rank 4 turbo but it was more to the unfair point while well, this deck is very very fair at doing what it does so with the new cards it has more potential and also it has some cards that were being used from Phantom Raids that are also very recent so I think the deck has potential to be a tier 2 deck I think it's very very roguish but at the right hands and with the right build it can definitely win a lot of games so before we begin with the video if you enjoy it give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel so you don't miss our upcoming content Content, and now let's get to the deck profile. So starting off with the monsters, play three copies of Time Thief Winder. Of course, you have to max out your Winder. You can detach a material from an Exis monster on your field to special summon from your hand. And if it's summoned, you add a Time Thief card from your deck to your hand. There is nothing bad about this card. It's an extended from the hand. It gives you advantage. It's such a good card when you use your regulator. This is the card you want to be getting 100% of the time unless you already have it in your hand. So you can special summon it anyway. Three copies of regulator. This is the best starter because it's basically a rescue rabbit. You tribute it and you special summon two Time Thief monsters with different names from your deck. Well, usually with this card you wanted to resolve. So I play a lot of cards in the deck that help you resolve this card, even if the cards are not very optimal, maybe even in a format where, for example, Gamma. If, even if Gamma is not a good card for a certain format because we're playing more of a control format, I would still play it if you have a card like Regulator in the deck because you have to resolve it 100%. If it doesn't resolve, then your turn basically ends. So this is why you need to be able to resolve that. And the reason, and the, be the best reason for being able to resolve it is because it says that you have to control no other monsters. So it's not like a card that you can normal summon then spam a few monsters. Since you control a dark monster or monsters that can special summon the sense from the hand and then use regulator, you have to absolutely use it without having anything else. So if it gets stopped, there is a good chance that you will not be able to do anything else. So this is why this being your starting play and this making sure that you have to resolve it is absolutely necessary. The new card we're playing, playing three copies of Time Thief Adjuster. I've seen people mess a lot with this card in different ratios, but I still think think is very very good at three so first of all if you summon a time thief monster you special summon her from your hand so it's an extender it's a really good card do not use it with regulator use it after you use regulator with the monsters you summon so i don't think you see a reason for this card not being a three of because any extend from the handle just a one card extender is really really good and if it's summoned you send a time thief card from your deck to the grave so you can send your fly back to the grave to get more interruption because you usually want to be searching your retrograde with your winder if you don't have it so this is why this card gives you more more interruption and before you didn't have a really good second target to summon with regulator you would usually summon a winder and maybe a bezel sip or a chrono quarter but now this card gives you an additional summon that actually gives you a really good plus so i think this card makes the deck makes regulator and the deck so much better just because it exists and for the one of time thief monsters play one copy of time thief chrono quarter and one copy of time thief bezel sip these you summon with your regulator in case you have drawn either your adjuster or your winder these monsters have have effects from the grave that special summons the sem themselves from the grave especially Bezel Sip it has really good synergy with Redoer because Redoer does not banish himself for cost on the field so he's leaving the field by a card effect so Bezel Sip can special summon itself back from the grave Chrono Quarter has a nice effect that during your opponent's battle phase you tribute it and the next damage you take is inflicted to your opponent instead so it has like a, a nice effect that might steal your game if your opponent is not really familiar with a deck and if a face up X monster you control is the field by a card effect while it's in the grave you special summon it as well but it leaves the field it's banned when it leaves the field you don't really care about this effect because you're going to use them as access materials anyway so they're going to hit the grave back again so you don't need to play more than one of each because they will keep bringing themselves back throughout the duel unless you link them but it doesn't really matter if they hit the grave again or not just using them once is great enough now there's a lot of good support that we got for the deck that is actually really good because they're all dark monsters so there are some restrictions with some archetypes that normally in any other archetype that wouldn't work but since you're playing a full dark deck you don't really mind so we're playing a raid raptor engine we have three copies of raider's wing this card if it's in your hand or your grave you detach a material from a dark exes you special summon it and it also has an effect that gives to an exes monster that is used uses this material that your opponent cannot 
target with card effects. So if you use a redoer with this as material, your opponent cannot bait it with an impermanence or something like that and force you to tag it out right away. So you can protect your redoer from something like that to make sure that you use the effect to bounce whenever you want, so you can disrupt your opponent. So this is why this card is really good. And we're playing, of course, three copies of Raider Raptor's Strangulanius. This is just a free special from the hand if you control a dark monster. It locks you into dark monsters, which you don't really mind. You can get away playing only dark monsters, even from your extra deck for an entire turn, maybe more. And also, if you control an Xyz monster with a dark Xyz material, you can target a level 4 or lower Raider Raptor monster in your grave to special summon it with its effects negated. Now, Raider's Wing does not say Raider Raptor in the name, but it always treated as a Phantom Knights and a Raider Raptor's card, so you can always bring it back with your Strangulanius. So these two work in tandem, you can bring one with the other, and then you have so many materials. The main goal of the deck is to get six level fours on the field. Two of them might become Lambda, and the rest of the four will become Perpetual Redoer. Once you get this setup on the field, the amount of advantage you can get is absolutely insane. You will be searching Gammas during the end phase, and also you will have a monster that can bounce your opponent's cards, potentially draw you more cards, protect itself from anything, and Perpetual will Will keep giving you more materials for your redoer and special summoning time thief mass from the grave to get more advantage if this deck gets rolling it's very very hard to stop it reminds me of alter guys where it might have a slow start especially when disrupted but if it gets going your opponent can't do absolutely anything about it and you're going to get so much advantage that you're going to overwhelm them and eventually beat them three copies of parallel exceed since you're playing links in the deck i think this card is really good to have because you are your main goal is to go for a lambda turn one unless your hand is very awkward and you don't have a lot of monsters in your hand that you can special summon but be being able to go for a Lambda and then go for a Redoer with Parallel Exceed is very important because Lambda gives you an additional interruption while Parallel Exceed gives you a free rank 4 on the field that even if you banish your Redoer right away and searching your Gamma, it doesn't matter because you, it only has monsters under it so it's not like you can disrupt your opponent unless you get lucky and hit a trap out of the top of their deck. So if you have Perpetua then you can do more stuff but this card is such a good card when you're playing a rank 4 deck that I definitely recommend you playing. One copy of Rocket Racer, one copy of Silver Rocket. Most decks use this for Savage Dragon. I use Use this for Xyz material. I don't even play a Synchro in the extra deck. You could play a Savage if you want, if you think that you're going to be training your rock, your drawing your lock at uh, your quick launch during the late game, because you don't have a link in the grave turn one. You never will, because it's impossible to get one in the grave. You don't have that many monsters to summon, and you need more of the rank four materials. But if you get into a grind game and you haven't used your rocket engine and you have a link monster in the grave because you've been grinding it out and you have a lambda in the grave, then maybe you can summon a Savage. Yes. So if you think that's necessary, then go for it and play it. But I don't think it's a really good thing to do because mostly you want these to go for either Perpetual or Redoer. The effect that locks you into dark monsters doesn't really matter at all because all of your monsters you can be summoning are dark. Yes, there are monsters in your extra deck that are not dark that you can summon. You'll be summoning them even sometimes when you actually don't get locked into darks. But even if you do, it doesn't really matter. There are plenty of darks. Even off, even other than Redoer and Perpetual, there is a monster that I think if you summon turn one can be really devastating against certain decks that is a dark monster. So I think you need to be playing that monster as well, but I'll show you a little bit later. For the hand traps, play three copies of Ash Blossom. You cannot play Impermanence in the deck because you play said Brigandine, so if you want to play hand traps, you have to be playing three copies of a generic hand trap that you think is good. Maybe you can play Nibiru, maybe you can play Diddy Crow or Veiler if you want. I choose Ash because it's the most generic one. But the next hand trap, I think you absolutely have to play in the deck, and that's three copies of Gamma with the one copy of Driver. Because, like I said again, Regulator is such an important card to go off. If your opponent asses it, then you can't do anything because you lose so much advantage. You lose an additional monster on the field because Regulator is one monster will give you two monsters and you also lose winder search and adjusters mill so you need to make sure that this card goes off so this is why even if in a format like even if we had only eldritch in the format and gamma was completely useless i would still play it in this deck because i just don't want my regular to get asked this is how important this card is so i highly recommend you playing this and since you can resolve this going first you can also summon omega before you get locked into dark monsters to also rip another card of your opponent's hand to make the play even better for the spells play three copies of quick launch with a rock you just get a free rank 4. Even if you draw one of the two and you cannot use the full combo with Tracer's effect, just getting an extra level 4 on the field is not bad at all. And you don't get locked into Dark Monsters if you don't use Tracer's effect. So if you don't get locked into Dark Monsters well, anyway, you can summon stuff like Tornado Dragon or Dweller, depending on the matchup, so you can counter even harder. One copy of Time Thief Startup. You just play this as a one-off because it's a searchable extender in case you have drawn something like your Bezel Sieve, maybe your Chrono Quarter. You can search this with your Winder if you already 
have the retrograde and then you can special summon another master of the hand. Its scary effect is very situational. In super grind games it will come up because it attaches three cards, one monster spell and one trap from your grave to an XC, to a time thief XC's monster. But they have to be time thief cards so they have to be specific specific cards. So it's like it will never very really happen. But with just this card, just an extender, you can extend even more. And also it's a quick play so you can potentially protect yourself by using this during your opponent's turn from a net K. This is an option too. One copy of Instant Fusion. It's a free right level 4 monster on the field and it gives you going second power by using Thousand Eyes and Thousand Eyes can bait any, any effects and then you can use a Link Rebo and then use your Parallel Exceed and your opponent will be forced to negate that as well. So it's like baiting two negates without even using anything. One copy of Call by the Grave. Just another means to make sure that, re that your regulator goes off. And for the traps, play three copies of Shade Brigandine. This is absolutely the best extender in the deck for the reason everybody knows. It gives a trap under your retour so you can use the effect to spin right away without having to use your flyback, without having to get get lucky to rip a trap out of your opponent's top deck. So this card is so insane, this is why you cannot play Impermanence in the deck, because if you're going second and you have used Impermanence for turn 1 to disrupt your opponent, you have a trap in the grave, so you cannot activate this right away. And for the Time Team Traps, play one copy of Retrograde. You don't really need more, the way this deck grinds is not by getting negates by using cards like Retrograde. You can use it once, yes, but then by spinning cards with your Redoer, you can just destroy your opponent very very consistently, because against grindy games, and against grindy decks, this deck is really really good. The only issue is that you might get OTK'd sometimes if your opponent has a really good hand, maybe with a deck like Dragon Link. But against it like Shadow Invoke, maybe if you spin the Alistair when they try to Invocation with your Redoer, then that's basically their entire turn gone. And then you can do more stuff. So if you're playing a control, if against the control deck, this deck will thrive. If you're playing against a combo deck, you have to adjust your place a little bit. But I think playing more copies of Retrograde would actually make the deck a lot more bricky. Same thing with Startup. This is why I only play one of each. And one copy of Flyback. This is something you either want to mill with your adjuster from your deck or use Perpetua's effect to put it under your Redoer as material so it can have a trap because you want this to get to the grave. This is a basically a DD Crow when it's in the grave. You banish it as a quick effect and then you select a card of your opponent's grave and you put it as material for one of your monsters. So maybe if your opponent uses an Alistair and they link it away and they think that they're going to use invocation, you can steal their Alistair with flyback so your opponent will not be able to fuse. For the extra deck, so first of all I want to talk about the new Xyz monster. This monster is just absolutely not worth playing. If you want to play it, then go ahead, but I think the deck can and actually win without something like that. It doesn't really need it. I also, if you if you noticed, I don't play the Utopia Packets double as well, because I think it's a bit weird. It gives you an extra brick for the potential of ending the game faster, but do you really want to end the game faster? Because the deck doesn't have trouble dealing damage. Yes, you're going to chip away most of the time and not OTK, but still, it's a control deck. You can't expect a control deck to be able to OTK, because if you want to be able to do that, you have to play an extra brick in the deck that is very susceptible to any hand trap, because your opponent will expect it. They might keep a Veiler or an ask for the Utopia double. So just your opponent fearing that you might have this card might make them play differently to the point that you don't even have to play to make your opponent play in a weird way. So just playing a rank 4 deck threatens the Utopia double even if you don't run it unless your opponent knows that you don't run it because maybe they didn't see it game one or they just know what, exactly what deck you're playing and how you're playing the deck because you're playing the same locals. But still, if you're playing in a random event that your opponent has no idea what you're playing, just playing this deck 99% makes your opponent think that you're playing Utopia a double so don't even play it just make sure your opponent thinks that you're playing it and then you're going to have a really fun time while your opponent is keeping a hand drop in their hand just for utopia double while you're doing real plays and interrupt it without ever planning to summon a utopia double so with that said let's start with the extra deck we have two copies of redoer you don't need to max this out this card is absolutely not going to get destroyed twice during a duel you have to get like droplet or dark Ruler twice in order for this card to go boom because it's such a good card that keeps jumping off the field and even if both copies get destroyed Perpetua can bring it back, so it's not a big deal. Two copies of Perpetua, this card makes sure that your Redoer has a trap under it, even if you didn't open Shade Brigantine or you didn't get lucky with your opponent's top deck. This card gives you more advantage by bringing back Winders from the Grave to give you more cards. Insane card. For the Zenerdic Rank Force, play one copy of Dweller, of course, against our matchups, Dweller is overkill. Same thing with one copy of Tornado Dragon, if you're playing against Subter, if you're playing against Altergeist, this card is really good. But the one monster that I want to make sure that everybody's playing in Time Thieves is one copy of Evil Storm Nightmare. This card is such a good card. First of all, it's a dark monster, so you can summon it even under any restrictions, no matter if you use your Rage Raptors, if you use the Rockets, you can still summon it. But this card, against a deck like Dragon Link, which this deck struggles a lot, just this alone on the field can win 
you the game because your opponent is trying to summon a dragon to use for your to use for the rocket link to get the field spell but if you flip them face down twice there's absolutely no way your opponent is going to go through any of their plays and it's very rare that your opponent is going to be able to special summon more than one dragon because usually in order to special summon dragons they have to have dragons in the grave to use stuff like the chaos dragons so if you flip face down their normal summon and maybe they have one special summon maybe they use chaos space to get one of the dragons and they banish what they discarded to get to the wyvern buster or the collapse serpent on the field you flip that face down as well their turn is done they cannot use red eyes arcus metal from the hand because they have to banish a face up dragon they cannot link away so you can get more dragons all of the revival spells like world legacy guard dragon are dead so this card even on its own can be enough to beat the dragon link matchup and if you combine this with something like a lambda or a redoer it's absolutely game so start playing this card if you're struggling with combos this is your answer to beating them it's such an insane card for the fusion monsters for the instant fusion play one copy of the mad dragon of course you can change this card's attribute to a dark so you can use actually your raider's wing actually not your raider's wing your strangled lanius because if you control a dark monster you can special summon your strangled lanius so you can also keep this on the field to make sure that your monsters are untargetable because you turn this into dark and then all monsters with the same attribute are untargetable for the turn so even just summoning this without using as material is good because you can make sure that the rest of their cards don't get veiled or impermed so there's that application as well one copy of thousand eyes restrict with instant fusion like i said going second and combining this with something like a parallel exceed you can bait so many negates and some people might not actually negate your instant fusion for whatever reason so by getting this on the field you just bait and negate and then by legging this away for a link rebo you can make sure your parallel exit goes through or if your opponent negates that as well you haven't even used the normal summon and with only two cards you've baited two negates and then you can continue with your plays one copy of omega in case you use your gamma during your own turn which will happen a lot because your opponent is 100 percent going to ash regulator there's absolutely nobody that will not ash regulator unless they have no idea what time thieves are doing so you're going to resolve gamma a lot when you draw this combo so gamma so on omega is a good card to have in the extra deck for the links play one copy of link Rebo. you can try to fit in anima in the deck as well but the problem with anima is that it doesn't help parallel exceed resolve because it points upwards so if you think that your opponent is going to fall for the old trick by putting a monster under the extra monster zone then you can go ahead and do it while testing it has never happened even against players i know even against random opponents nobody ever puts anything important on the extra monster zone so there's absolutely no way that you're going to get some value but if you think you can then you can find space for it one copy of lambda this is the only generic link to you need to play that will give you markers you don't need stuff like mascarena you are never going to use her this card is absolutely insane because redoer is a side monster so you get search your gamma and every time you use gamma if you use it during your own turn then you can put your driver in the grave by linking it away or using it for synchro material for omega and then you can keep using gamma over and over again this is the one deck that can resolve gamma maybe even three times in the same game so this is absurd this card gives you so much more value because you do play a psychic monster that banishes itself from the field for the nightmares play one copy of phoenix one copy of unicorn of course you need some back removals you need some spot removal sometimes you will run out of traps to use your redoer and then you can link climb into these to clear your opponent's board and go for a game and one copy of underworld goddess of the closed world sometimes you might struggle with dragoon that's true sometimes if your opponent knows what they're doing and they keep their negate for redoer because non-targeting spin is the only way you can deal with dragoon then they just negate your redoer then you're done so you need a card like this in order to be able to deal with it and summoning four monsters on the field or three monsters with a link too is very very easy for this deck so before you lock yourselves into dark monsters you can use this to go to get rid of the dragoon and maybe you can use your parallel exceed then maybe you can use the rest of your stuff to go for rank 4 as well so you have more stuff but maybe just maybe you need this in order to get rid of dragoon it's better not to have it because against the good opponent if they know what they're doing and keep it negate for redoer there's no way you're going to go through a dragoon so you need this card just in case so yep that's the deck guys time thieves is a deck that a lot of people enjoy a lot of people liked especially when it first came out but just the support it got it was very delayed but we're still waiting for even more support so this deck can only get better so stick with us we're going to update the deck every time it gets direct or indirect support because i think it's a deck with a lot of potential and a very unique play style i enjoy a lot and i love a lot of people enjoy too so yep that's the deck guys if you enjoyed it give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel so you don't miss our upcoming content and we'll see you next time